the Chancellor, Your Royal Majesty Utumfo Osei Tutu II, Chairman and members of the University Council, Vice Chancellor, Faculty, Registrar, Provost of Colleges, members of Convocation, Senior and Junior Staff, Class of 2021, ladies and gentlemen, it is a privilege and indeed an honor for me to stand before you today. I should first of all thank the authorities of this great institution for inviting me as the motivational speaker on this special occasion. It is often the dream of graduating students to imagine that one day they too will be invited as a commencement speaker of their alma mater. Mr. Chairman, it's a great honor for me as an alumnus of KNUST to join the roll call of distinguished graduating speakers of our great university. It is an honor and a privilege for which I am truly humbled. And so I thank you. So as you can therefore imagine, it was not at all a difficult decision when I received the call that I was being considered as the motivational speaker for this ceremony today. Let me explain. In the year 2005, I received a somewhat similar call from the then Ghana Telecom, now Vodafone, to deliver a two-week networking training course to their information technology staff at the Ghana Telecom training facility in Tisano, Accra. I accepted the offer without a second thought. At that time, I was climbing up the ladder in my career as a telecom engineer at the NASA Garda Space Flight Center, and at the same time running a successful Cisco networking training business in the Washington, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia metropolitan area in the United States of America. Having obtained the Cisco Certified Internetworking Expert CCIE certification in the year 2000. The technology training business worldwide was booming. Locally in the US, I had trained students who had gone on to take positions with the White House Communications Department, CIA, FBI, and other important state and federal institutions, including Fortune 100 companies. The most important aspect was that the invitation to Ghana was a dream come true. I saw it as a great opportunity to travel back to my country to share the knowledge that I had acquired abroad, having been privileged to work and learn from one of the most talented workforces in the entire world, the engineers at NASA. This was a dream realized for someone who graduated from this university, KNUST, with a Bachelor of Science degree in geodetic engineering, and now set to deliver a training program in computer networking to electrical engineers and computer scientists. How is this possible? Well, my dear friends of class of 2021, please let me use this opportunity to share with you a little bit of the trajectory of my career, the ups and downs, and in so doing, touch on some four key important factors that will make you a winner in your long but hopefully exciting journey ahead. But first, let me congratulate you all for making it to the end. You should be proud of yourselves. Just look back to the beginnings when you started primary school and subsequently junior high and then senior high before the university. Just consider the number of classmates you have left behind along the way for a whole variety of reasons. Some might not have been as bright as you are. Others might have lost a parent or guardian along the way and so couldn't afford the fees. Some might even have lost their own lives. I dare say you should scream because I know it has not been an easy journey. The many sleepless nights, the pressure to complete the assignments before submission deadlines, and for some of you, the times you had to retake the course because you missed the pass mark. So yes, you have every right to be super excited. You should exhale and be proud of your achievement today. This is indeed 
a special day in your lives. Congratulations. Now back to my story, my own journey. As a young boy growing up in Suhum, in the Eastern region, my goal was to be a medical doctor. Honestly, I would not be surprised if many of you graduating today felt the same way at one point when you were in high school. So back in high school, or in secondary school, as it was known then, I signed up to read biology. I was thrilled because I thought I was getting close to my dream. But that dream did not last long. After just one term, the only biology instructor in the whole school teaching ordinary level, O level, left for Nigeria. In those days, the common phrase was, he is gone to Agege. Ah well, so I said to myself, let me concentrate on math and statistics with a new goal of reading a first degree in electrical engineering at KNUST and finally specializing as an aeronautical engineer when I get the opportunity to travel abroad for further studies. Back then, aeronautical engineering was not offered at any university in Ghana. I did very well at the O-level and gained admission to Opokuwari School for sixth form as a science student. In those days, there was absolutely no way you could do O-level as home secondary technical school, Sutesco, and gain admission at Opokuwari for A-levels unless you were a smart kid. But unfortunately, as destiny will have it, my A-level grades were weak. And so I could not get me admission into electrical engineering. So just as I wanted to become a medical doctor, my hope of becoming an aeronautical engineer was also dashed. As a matter of fact, I could not get admission into any engineering program at the first cut. I was devastated and disappointed. I cried. Yes, you heard me. I cried. But more than anything else, I felt I had disappointed my mother. She was really looking up to me becoming an engineer, the first in her family. And of course, to be in a position to take care of her when she grew old. This brings me to my first advice to you as you journey from KNUST today. Determination and persistence. You must make up your mind that come what may, you will achieve the goals you have set for yourselves. The journey to your goal might be long and meandering, and you may fail for the first, second, even a third or fourth time. But you must be determined and persistent. Sometimes you may have to be agile and adapt to changing situations and circumstances around you. But you must focus on your target. That way, even if you fail to hit your preferred objective, you will come close. In my case, as I indicated earlier, my initial goal was to become a doctor. Then I settled for aeronautical engineer. But I could not achieve either because I did not have good enough grades at the A level to be admitted at KNUST to pursue a BSc in electrical engineering, which would have taken me towards my second goal. So, I had to quickly adapt and with determination find any other engineering program that would accept me. So when KNUSD reopened for the school year, I decided to join the bus ride from Achimoda to KNUSD, even though I had not been admitted to any program. In the bus on that day were friends from Oda and surrounding towns who had been admitted to read pharmacy, architecture, mechanical engineering, civil engineering, medicine, etc. The journey from Oda to Kumasi turned out to be one of the most sobering moments in my life. Everyone was singing and clapping. They used to call it Jama in those days. And excited to be admitted at KNUSD. Except a friend who is currently a professor in Japan and I. We were mostly quiet throughout the whole journey, not knowing what the future had in store for us. Thanks to 
Professor S. W. Crunchy of blessed memory, I got admitted on the last day of the standard admission period to the Department of Geodetic Engineering. I was super excited, to say the least, because I had been on campus for a good two weeks, patching with a friend at the Republic Hall, and not knowing if I would ever be admitted. I did not even know what geodetic engineering was. And guess what? I did not care. As long as the program had the word engineering in it, I was fine. Because, you know what? I wanted my mother to know that her son was on his way to become an engineer. Beside that, and most importantly, I knew if I could get through the first degree, I would be itching close to my goal. A few years after graduating with BSc Geodetic Engineering, I arrived in the United States of America, pursued a technical program in computer networking, and landed a job with a reputable U.S. defense contractor as a network administrator at the United States Postal Service, USPS. This was at a time when most corporate institutions and organizations in the world were migrating from standalone operations to local area networks and wide area networks. And so there was a lot of systems and networking problems being reported to the help desk that needed fixing. I excelled at that job and was always taxed with the most difficult troubleshooting assignments. It came as no surprise to the staff when within two years, I was asked to join the network team as a network engineer. Soon after, I got the ultimate reward. I landed a job at the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, Gada Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. Though not as aeronautics engineer, but a network engineer, I was elated. NASA is a famous and prestigious world-class scientific organization. You must be wondering, how did you find yourself at NASA with your educational background? Well, I shall repeat my earlier advice. You must make up your mind and work diligently towards your goals. The journey might be long and meandering, and you might fail again and again and again, but be determined and persistent. Next, reflect on the concept of ownership and apply to your professional career, and trust me, you will stand out and distinguish yourself. You see, as you go out into your various professional environments, whether full-time or for national service, be sure to own a project, own a service in your department, ensure that your team or your boss knows that when it comes to a particular area, you are the go-to person. You are the best in that particular department, field, skill, or task. You see, there's a difference between renting a room or an apartment and owning a house. Your attitude in this scenario is totally different. When you own something, you give it a special treatment and you take the best possible care of it. It's the path to excellence and recognition. At some point in my career at NASA, through a dent of hard work, I had become a telecom engineer and subsequently a service owner of the NASA mission routed data infrastructure. What the latter means is I was responsible for all data conductivity requests and operations within the NASA mission data network. Essentially, if a NASA mission space project required data connectivity to, say, the International Space Station, ISS, and any number of satellite tracking stations worldwide, the team of engineers that I managed was responsible for studying the request, designing and provisioning according to specification. Can you believe this? That was a huge assignment. As a service owner, I learned how to be conscientious with responsibilities and timelines. My team held weekly peer reviews of the various projects each one was working on. 
This ensured that our output was always flawless. It was not a surprise to anyone then that in the year 2007, I won the Employee of the Year Award with the contract I was working with at the time. The citation read, outstanding participation and dedication to the success of the NASA Marshall Space Flight Center UNICE contract. I was exceedingly proud. My final advice to you is keep the entrepreneurial spirit in you alive and burning. Do not ever let it extinguish. You are blessed to be raised up in this digital age where every location and information in the world is literally in the palm of your hand. There's a lot on the web that you can leverage to build an alternative career to vary and expand your sources of income. Every one of you has something to offer that is unique and special. This is how we were created as human beings. Very often, this special talent tailor-made for you by the creator is dormant because we fail to explore and exploit it. It's like diamonds underneath the soil on which you stand. Simply ask yourself, what is it that you can do so easily that others struggle with? That's the talent that lies buried in underneath your feet. Dig it up, exploit it, use it, and let it generate value for you and impact those near you. A couple of years after I was hired at NASA, a friend of mine whom I had helped troubleshoot a technical issue at a previous job, and who thought I could be a great technical instructor, introduced me to a technical institution that operated next to the University of Maryland main campus in Greenberg. The course I was to teach was a Cisco Certified Network Associate, CCNA. I was a bit reluctant at first, but finally accepted the offer because, after all, it was an evening class that did not conflict with my day job. The rest is a well-documented history. In the next 17 years after my initial class, I became one of the premier Cisco technical instructors in the Washington, D.C., Maryland, Virginia metropolitan area, teaching CCNA, Cisco Certified Network Professional, CCMP, and Cisco Certified Internetwork Expert, CCIE classes. In the last nine out of the 17 years of teaching, I founded my own company, providing technical training in the evenings, impacting lives, and changing destinies of many. I trained security guards, nurses, taxi drivers, music teachers, pastors, etc., to become network engineers, enabling them to find high paying employment to support themselves and their families. I impacted many lives. So how did I come by these teaching skills? Well, remember I told you that before my O-levels, my biology instructor left for Nigeria. Well, he's not the only instructor who left. Several instructors left as well. It was a very difficult time in Ghana. I remember they call it the brain drain. So without a choice, my friends and I started teaching each other depending on who was good at a particular subject. Soon after, we were running vacation classes in Achimoda during long vacations. I was the unofficial headmaster for these very successful vacation classes that touched a lot of lives. So I was able to turn adversity into opportunity. Somewhere in the year 2015, I received an important call to come back home to volunteer for a national assignment. I heeded to the call, resigned from NASA in January 2016, closed down my technical training business and came down. I went from a high paying job in a prestigious institution to a no paying volunteer for a year. A few of my friends thought I was getting crazy, but I did not come empty handed nor empty headed. I came back with essential soft skills, which I had acquired over the years 
in my professional life that always made me a winner. I had participated as a telecom engineer and mission service owner in several successful space shuttle launches from Earth to the International Space Station and back to the Earth. And so I understood very well what the word attention to details meant. I also knew what is meant to be conscientious with responsibilities and timelines. Together, these soft skills will always make you a winner. And so, Mr. Chairman, my dear young friends, let me conclude with a recap of how you can also become a winner. Number one, be determined and persistent. Number two, take ownership and distinguish yourself within your team. Number three, be conscientious with your responsibilities and timelines. Number four, explore the entrepreneur in you. Identify that special talent and literally mine it. Number five, above all, have faith in God. This has been my story. May it motivate you as you begin your own long journey and may it become your own story too. And may you make your mother or whoever has been your guardian proud as has been my mother. Congratulations again, class of 2021. God bless you all.